According to the World Health Organization, mental health enables people to cope with stress, realize their abilities, learn and work well, and contribute to their community. When it becomes hard for a person to live their normal life, it's a sign they may have a mental health problem. It becomes psychopathology when normal anxiety turns into too big anxiety and it creates a dysfunction. Anytime there is a problem with level of function, it becomes not normal. A 2023 report by Mental Health of America found that 16% of kids aged 12 to 17 experienced at least one major depressive episode in the past year. Feelings of sadness can arise for many different reasons and affect a person's physical health. Um, I wasn't diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder until I was almost 16. My entire life growing up, I was put to the same standard as everyone else, but that really didn't work out for me because I would slip through the cracks in school, saw a psychologist who specializes in autism with for girls. Life, life changed after that. Life changed. I would start to have these depressive episodes. Like one day I'd be having the best day of my life. I'd be having so much fun. I'd be so happy. And then the next day I'd be so sad. I'd be so depressed that I couldn't get out of bed. At first I brushed it off. I thought it was just hormones. It was just another thing to worry about on top of an already stressful junior year until I realized it was happening more often. It was affecting more and more of my life. It was hard for me to concentrate. I wasn't getting any sleep. And then I realized I needed some help. I have both anxiety and depression, which helps a lot to have a diagnosis. I started noticing that my anxiety um, and my sensitivity to certain things like noises was very high. Sometimes it would lead to panic attacks or panic episodes where I didn't really know what was going on. It made school and life and leadership just a whole lot harder to take on until I um, noticed that I need help. In CSISD, there are a few free resources to help students. They can visit with school counselors, who can then help the student get in touch with healthcare providers. The counseling office also has a relaxation room, where students go to de-stress or attend virtual therapy sessions. It was really, really terrifying for me to say, I need help. Luckily, I had friends um, who were able to help me. And if you were just freshly diagnosed and you are trying to relearn life, you'll get it. You'll get it eventually. I want people to realize that mental health isn't something you're doing wrong necessarily. It's a chemical imbalance in your brain. An important way to keep good mental health is to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Lack of sleep and social media are common sources of stress for teenagers. We're born to network and to communicate and to socialize. Social platforms, social media has actually increase the rates of loneliness among teenagers and other populations. We have an epidemic of loneliness among students, as well as sleep deprivation, as well as not eating right and certainly not getting enough exercise oftentimes. But the brain responds very well to the gleam in each other's eyes when we're talking face to face if we get enough exercise and sleep and eat right. Those four things are the most important in terms of mental well-being.